May, may it please you, Mr. Speaker, I rise to make my contribution in this Honorable House for the Budget Debate of 2013 as presented by Dr. the Honorable Ashley Singh, Minister of Finance, entitled Overcoming Challenges Together, Accelerating Gains for Diana. <laughs> While all have rights to his or her opinions, and interpretations, and we of the opposition will never deny the Honourable Mr. My Minister Ashley Singh of this right. We must be able to distinguish between opinions and the realities that exist. <coughs> I say this because of what the Honourable Minister attempted to lecture to us in the beginning of his budget presentation. He spoke about the Examples of parliamentary actions occasioned at the behest of the opposition's one seat majority. The PPP biggest nightmare that, con that consumed valuable legislative time and effort in futile, unproductive, and oftentimes counterproductive forces. This, colleagues, is opinion a la Dr. The Honorable Minister Ashley Singh. His statements, caustic as they are, couldn't be far from the truth. Now, let's consider the facts and therefore the truth. The combined opposition in the last 14 months acted successfully to cut excesses in the budgetary allocations due to lack of accountability and transparency. We successfully passed the motion of no confidence against a poorly functioning minister. And that motion remains. Yes, we successfully moved motions and attempted to pass bills that do not collide with the Constitution. The taking of the opposition to the courts of law by the government was without merit and can best be considered as a further waste of taxpayers' money in the interest of supporting the PPP's seized minority government passing interest. Let it be known that should this opposition, with its one seat majority, and that's all we need, ever find it necessary, and I know we will, to do this again, we will go right ahead and do our duty to the people of Guyana who elected us to this assembly. <coughs> This is so particularly because of how the courts of public opinion have judged what we have done in the past 14 months. Let it be known also that this opposition is very much prepared to act as we have done in the past year and are eagerly awaiting the opportunity to do more on behalf of representing the interests of our constituents and even the constituents of the PPPC who are increasingly finding themselves disillusioned by the government they elected. So I invite the PPPC to call the bluff. We are ready, willing, and waiting. It was the same minister in his budget presentation last year who announced to the National Assembly in a completely different tone that there must be no doubt that as much as this current parliamentary dispensation provides important opportunities, so is it fraught with formidable challenges and continued that our quest for lasting solutions will have to be dominated not by partisan agenda but by rational and meritocratic consideration driven less by our impulsive instinct and more by our careful and deliberate judgment. This was the minister. He said that we must be able to resist the political lure of making choices that might have short-term appeal and that compromise long-term imperative. And most of all, the current dispensation will require us to stew political opportunism and grandstanding and work together to make good and sound decisions that can withstand the test of time. That's what he said last year. 
almost impossible to believe that those words are coming from the same person just 11 days ago who spoke in a most corrosive manner. We beg that you dismiss these assertions of 40 that you that we urge General Minister, in the interest of all Guyanese and the good of our nation, to revisit and commit to those statements that you made 14 months ago. With the, with the aim of achieving universal health coverage, through the primary health care approach, this 2013 budget has allocated $90.2 billion to the health sector. But this can best be considered as only a start, for it has now become the norm, and we only have to sit back and wait for the PPPC government to come back to this honorable house for the approval of supplementary appropriation that they have already spent. In the 19th Parliament alone, the Honourable Minister came back with 40 supplementary appropriation bills. This year's budget allocation to the health sector is 2.2 billion more than last year, which was 17 billion and was mainly for the infrastructure development, development of public health personnel, and the provision of quality health service. Of last year's budget, 70, of last year's 70 million budget in the health, for the health sector, one billion was spent on infrastructure development, including funds for mobilizing payment for the controversial, due to the shady manner in which information had to be obtained, and the many unanswered questions of the specialty surgical hospital. This caused the Honorable Minister of Health, the Honorable Dr. Perry Ransran, to go to, to go to great lengths in his budget presentation last year to differentiate between site preparation and land preparation. And he even referred to certain mayors being racist because of questions asked. Mr. Speaker, if you would agree that we should be careful at all times and not to label others as being racist when our own past actions can best be construed as such. Not one on this side of the house was impressed by the Honorable Minister, Dr. Barry Ramsran, in his harping about the award of the contract for the site preparation which was given to the Bovell Construction Services from Albaistan, naming every single official of the company probably to convince himself and the rest of his party that the PPPC government still gave contracts to companies owned by Afro-Guyanese. I can assure the Honourable Minister that it has become difficult not to see some degree of race baiting by the accusation of being racist as a desperate attempt to wake up some degree of sympathy among a particular race group of the Guyanese population. The government is assuming that the Guyanese population has unlimited access to the internet. The government is assuming that the Guyanese population has unlimited access to the internet. So we were told that all the information about this, special, this specialty hospital project is available online. No effort was made by the authorities to place the information in the daily newspaper to which the Guyanese do have access and where they are more inclined to seek such information. There still is a controversy in the award through the tender process where the bank guarantee submitted by the company Surrender Engineering who won the tender bid was on an Indian bank led ahead that was never confirmed by any of our local banks. This should outrightly have disqualified that company and should have made them a non-responsive bidder in the first place. We should also note that the established tender process of the National Procurement and Tender Administration sponsored bidder in the first place. We should also note that the established in the process of the National Procurement and Tender Administration Board was not followed, so that the company with no financial links to local banks was awarded the contract, despite a competing company 
having such links with an established and reputable financial institution operating here in Guyana. Of four interest, Mr. Speaker, should be the fact that the company selected and awarded the project of which the Indian government is lending 18 million US dollars <coughs> has no experience with construction of this type of scale as compared to other tenders whose principal projects are construction of health institutions of the scale of our specialty hospital and they have done so the reward of this contract to that company that Mr. Speaker should remind us all of the FIP Motilal and the award yes. to the construction yes. I'm sure we all know what happened like Not to that our past experience with the awarded company is not of a pleasant nature. That company, Mr. Speaker, was blacklisted by Guy Sugar that had to withhold monies for this company at one time in the construction of the MO packaging plant. This company also had some difficulties in the supply of some pumps for the drainage and irrigation board. I mentioned all of this. Mr. Speaker, because of the 2.3 billion that is a mark for infrastructure development in the health sector, 1.25 billion has been budgeted for the specialty surgical hospital in 2013. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Mr. Hamilton in his budget presentation last year claimed that Dr. Norton came to the National Assembly and to quote him, prize and prize and prize bringing all his teams here. The Honorable Mr. Hamilton failed to recognize that I am making heartfelt and empathetic representation for the poor, the downtrodden, the marginalized and the neglected of this beloved nation of ours. Who do not have access to suitable and quality health care and who quite unlike some, like the Honorable Mr. Hamilton himself, do not have the means of seeking such at private hospitals here in Guyana or overseas, as in some cases. Thanks to the government of Mr. Hamilton, the Honorable Member. But let me remind the Honorable Member that because I have been in the medical profession for more than two and a half decades, I speak from fact and experience. I am not just a lady in the health sector. I have seen what he has not seen. And I have heard from the people most in need of medical care what he has not heard in all of Guyana. And I have experienced the plight of patients dying for reasons that are avoidable. And certainly, Mr. Speaker, I have been a member of parliament for 15 years. This is so because I'm here to represent the Guyanese people who need the kind of health services immediately, immediately and affordable, which the government of the Honorable Mr. Hamilton is not providing. Besides, I'm a member of, and with strong allegations to the PNCR, a member of the opposition partnership, allegiance, allegiance and the people it represents. An allegiance which you, the Honorable Mr. Hamilton, once shared not so long ago. I thank you for the Honorable Member that I stand firm in support of that party. And I have no crossover, no contact with the family. I am here as a member of the opposition not to praise you nor your government. That's right. But to point out, to advise, to remind you, right. to criticize you, That's and right. when you're not doing what you were supposed to be you doing on behalf of all Guyanese, and to tell you <laughs> of your shortcomings, <laughs> and what I see <laughs> as <a> failures, <laughs> poor implementation, <laughs> and less than effective policies. <laughs> and I do so with no apology. 12 minutes is because <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the Honourable me Member spent most of his last year budget presentation referring to my presentation. It seems that there was a problem with the Honourable Member. And here again I go. That 
20 minutes the long as problem. Mr. Speaker, the only person to be called and talked to from the Armenian community in the Poverty of Republic of Kenya is Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, even if you did have a problem with the fact that I was the only person no, called and talked to from the Armenian community, he, and he had a problem, that was incorrect. And we find it unacceptable. Distasteful for the member to come here to this house and to express such an idea, even if he had it in mind. I'm speaking about last year. contribution of myself with all zeal and enthusiasm. For I have been with the University of Ghana Medical School from its inception and helped in the formation of several Amerindian doctors. Let us again deal with the fact. I was qualified in 1988, but was not the first Amerindian to be qualified as a doctor. But thanks to the PNC government, I qualified as a specialist along with so many others in the area of surgery, laboratories, orthopedics, psychiatrists, pathologists, maxillofacial, the, the name of some, most of whom are still in Guyana and some still with government agencies. In 1992, the PUPC gained office and it took more than 15 years according to the government for them to support the training of another and ready to qualify as well. That is a horror. <laughs> it is a fact that I am the point man of health of the main opposition party. The fact that I spent some good time speaking about the Georgetown Public Hospital, which it wasn't accurate. The situation at the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation necessitates such focus and scrutiny for correction because of the large sum of money that is allocated to that institution and because it is the main center for referrals and advanced aid case management. At time, being the only such center, it is necessary that due attention be paid and comments be made relevant to enhancing the delivery of quality service, which in many instances and in situations, I think we have some problems when we hear that at the Georgetown Public Hospital, that the rats that are eating the corpse at the mortuary and not the dolls that was done in Region 1 not so long ago. We do not want to hear the public of cry that no hospital washroom should be as thick as that of the Georgetown Public Hospital. It's uncomfortable for some to hear that the 8 million US dollars that was spent for the inpatient facility at the Georgetown Hospital, which is little over one year old, seems to be crumbling already. With the ceiling falling in various places, being swollen with moisture. The continuous overflowing of the sinks, toilets, and washroom. The floors remain peeled and cracked and dirt stained. Ventilation remains a problem as none of the electrical points are functioning, so patients can't use electrical fans, especially in the wards with one door and without windows. One of the elevators is broken, as well as the intercommunication system not functioning. Bed sharing still remains an issue, and at times you even have to share the bed with the dead. If all of this is taking place right here in Georgetown, one can only imagine what is happening in the other 364 health facilities in this country. If at the regional hospital in Region 7, Bartico, 
the yearly allocation of drugs has not yet been delivered, excuses being staff shortage. Just think about the situation at the level of the district hospital at Cameron, that is without a doctor for over one year. Or at Madian Region 8, or at the health centers and health hubs in these regions. When a similar situation was reported by the newspaper about no drugs at the Buxton Health Center, blame was readily placed on some delinquent pharmacists. Mr. Speaker, there are no reagents to do lab work at the Barticle Hospital, not even an HP. Patients are forced to seek the same at private labs. We have a malaria technologist functioning as a pharmacist. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Speaker, rather, with the contribution of our regional MP, we can be assured that all the shortcomings of the health sector will be pointed out in all of the NSA 3,000 square miles. We have situations that were referred to in the last budget presentation in the Lethem Hospital, in the Maggio Hospital, in the Linden Hospital, and all we had was that these were noted. In the Linden Hospital, for instance, and we heard the Honorable Minister speaking so much about sending persons to get trained and about the Linden Hospital being one of the best in the country. There has been so much talk about sending persons overseas to, to do for the specialist training, but yet we have a doctor who was specializing in ophthalmology, is now back in Linden for over one year. And the conditions for maximum utilization of our skills are yet, to, are yet not in place, especially with respect to consumables and auxiliary personnel for surgical procedures. We had three years to put arrangement in place, but we have failed to do so. It seems that there are no interests on the part of the authorities to get this done. It was only yesterday I heard a number, a member from the government benches referring to my brothers and sisters from Linden. Are they being treated differently? Should they not have access to the service of ophthalmology in their own tongue like the people of Georgetown and New Amsterdam or Port Morant? We want to hear what is the government's plan of action to correct these situations of no water nor electricity at the Cameron Hospital and shortage of drugs and adequate drug storage, uh, adequate storage facility at the Madia Hospital. We want to know when these situations will be corrected because we expect that the ministry to be fully aware of the situation. This is the strategy of the health sector that I was claiming that I have no understanding of. Mr. Speaker, it makes no sense boasting about the 129 health centers, the 209 health hubs that exist if they are not functioning properly, if they are understaffed, without equipment, no drugs. And it would, it would be interesting to note <laughs> we learned, Mr. <laughs> Mrs. Mr. Speaker, that in 2011, over 15 million was expanded on Medivac, bringing patients who have medical problems out of the interior. And in 2012, more than 19 million was expanded. We listened to the Honorable Minister, Dr. Barry Ramsuran. Oh, he yes. boasted about how effective yeah. is the Medivac program. Yes. Of course. This year, Mr. Speaker, the public is watching and waiting to see what is the tidying up, according to the Minister, we hear from him, that will be done to avoid the repetition of the very sad situation of 15-year-old Zalina Shadik, who had her throat slit and was practically disemboweled 
and could not be evacuated in time to save our life from Mabarumo Region 1. We all had to swallow the typical statement made by the Honorable Minister of we do not shake pilots from the sky or off trees as the excuse for not being able to do so to save the life of that poor girl. We, the Guyanese people who want to see a protocol established mandatorily requiring domestic airlines to put all systems in place to many emergency patients. It, clear, it was clear that I came to this, this house and cried. I brought my tears here. But apparently some of us will not. When we hear or we will not move to tears when we read the death note that Zelina from her deathbed wrote to her father begging for forgiveness. This problem, Mr. Speaker, is not confined only to the availability of aeroplanes and airplane pilots. In Region 9, it is the availability of suitable vehicles to provide transport for the critically ill from the far from villages to the Latin Regional Hospital, as was ably pointed out by the Honorable Sidney Alicot. In early January of this year, 20 year old. Female Francis, a nursery school teacher from the village of Napi, died due to lack of transportation to take her to the Latin hospital at the time. This was so after the villagers were informed that the driver for the vehicle in Latin was not available. But Mr. Speaker, this is not the first time that this has happened. For not so long ago, the driver of the ambulance could not be found to transport a 14 month year old baby girl from Shia South Rukun to the Povista Hospital in time and she eventually perished. The Honorable Sidney Alicock spoke of the 33 year old Rosalind Stevens of Parashar village who died just after childbirth because there was no vehicle to take her to the Leather Hospital. It was while this patient was in labor and bleeding profusely that she had to be taken on a motorbike. She died that night leaving six children, Mr. Speaker, for her elderly mother to care for. The ATV and the truck that was promised to the Maria Hospital from last year, but the budget have not been provided to that hospital as yet. How many have to die for something positive to happen? So, the many bad situation that the minister boasted so much about could be much more than just a tidy up, to quote the minister. We all remember, and I wonder if the doctor, the Honorable Ram Sami, would remember this of the Honorable Minister boasting to the press that he is assuming the health of the ministry will ensure that it will not be business as usual. And in instances when it was not feasible to take certain services to the community, services needed will be effectively accomplished through the Medibac program. This situation certainly is worse than business as usual. In Region 1, for instance, Mr. Speaker, especially in and around the village of Port Kaituma, the outbreak of gastroenteritis was a crisis waiting to happen. It was only after the death of three children and the number of cases reached a total of 529 just two weeks ago that the authority seems to act proactively with all the other different agencies that are involved. Mr. Speaker, this was all due to the contamination of water for domestic purposes, including that which is used for bathing purposes and for brushing one's teeth. This, this was claimed to be as a result of the quality of water in the area 
affected by mining operations. And Mr. Speaker, I crave your attention as I mentioned mining. And the lack of response by the officials at the GGMC. According to the Guyana Water Incorporation, the water pump ceased to operate due to, due to the more key waters from, from the mining operations in the area. Mr. Speaker, in the neighboring village to Port Kaituma of Sibai, the river water was being pumped in the pipelines without being treated. So even the water that was flowing from the pipe, when tested just three weeks ago, was found to be extensively contaminated with both fecal coliformity and E. coli bacteria, meaning the water is contaminated from human feces. As I said before, these situations were just waiting to happen. Unfortunately, not only in Region 1, but in Region 7, there's another situation where the residents of Bartica have reported a dumping of fecal matter along the Taro Road, calling for the Ministry of Health for their intervention. In Region 2, in early February, it was made public the dumping of harmful hospital waste in Red Village, a village of about a thousand persons on their subway coast, which includes human bones and biological we strange that we seem to be having a national environmental crisis, Mr. Speaker. Since it was pointed out by the Minister in the Ministry of Local Government and Regional Development itself, the Honourable Mr. Norman Whitaker, who said that the Environmental Health Officer has been found to be incompetent in several areas of the health services. In speaking about the improvement to the West Demerara Regional Hospital, the Honourable Minister Barry Ramsran, he praises on Dr. Bridge Mahan, adding that the good doctor reports to him sometimes three, four, or five times a day. But not only what is happening in the West Demerara Hospital, but in the Leonora Hospital. Tell me, God, should it not be necessary for should it be necessary for a qualified professional such as Dr. Bridge Mahan to call the boss? three, four, or five times a day to make report in the wake, Mr. Speaker, of the death of pregnant Tushana Cameron, 21, of Bagothville, who bled to death with complications after the doctors decided to induce labor, and the death of 15-year-old Shimar McGinn's under questionable circumstances at the West Demerara Hospital. Why are processes of rectification now being engaged and improvement of services now being seen? Why? in the aftermath. The Honourable Minister himself has confessed to the fact that the Barbicians are greatly dissatisfied about the health services being provided in both regions 5 and 6. The reason why all this is now reaching the press even though it existed a long time ago is because of the effort of the Honourable Minister to convince the Guyanese public and particularly the relatives that a power failure was not responsible for the death of T. Tawati Shoandu undergoing surgery at the New Amsterdam Hospital. The Honorable explained was hours after the surgery she died, not a few minutes after, so that was not the cause of her death. The doctors know their ways of keeping a person alive and they did that. Mr. Speaker, I remember in his presentation last year, you asked the Dr. Honorable, Dr. The Honorable yeah. Mahadio, a special favoring in admitting patients whom you described as a resident of the National Assembly to the psychiatric hospital in Region 6. The situation now has become worse. That number has increased. Mr. Speaker, we must remember of the little schoolboy who was brutally attacked by one such person and another who killed a citizen in another part of the city. One gets the impression that the situation of the, psych the service of psychiatry in this country is certainly not one that we can be proud of. We call upon the Honorable Minister to make his plans a reality of extending mental health services and treatment beyond the doors of the psychiatric hospital. This is very much so because of the frightening issue of suicide. 
This should be a national approach, Mr. Speaker. For only in today's newspaper, we read about the case of Janil Ramnarain, 24 years of Richmond Hill region as an SPO. For there have been a notable increase in suicide rates, especially in, 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 in that area. Richmond Housing Scheme Rather. Just to mention a few, Nandrani Nandrain of Charity, Param Sundar of Anna Regina, Roy Jones of Queenstown, not forgetting 16-year-old Safra Satar and 15-year-old Natasha Nazamuddin. And of course, we cannot, we can never forget the case of the 18-year-old Ronnie Ramit from Abaluma who hung himself after splitting the throat of 15-year-old Zalima. Mr. Speaker, I can continue for the rest of the night pointing out to the inefficiencies of our health system and always in which in ways in which it can be corrected. But I would just want to remind you of a few of the salient points of my presentation. It is necessary, Mr. Speaker, for us to scrutinize the functioning of the GPHC because of its importance and the network of health facilities across the length and breadth of this country. We need to follow closely the situation of the specialty surgical hospital. More emphasis must be placed on the environment and there needs to be greater interagency collaboration to ensure health safety for our citizens of all the country. And lastly, we ask that the government adopt a more robust approach to this psychiatric service available to all citizens of this country. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, I end by making reference to all of you. The famous Martin Carter's poem, which says, "We are, oh, we all are involved, and all will be consumed." Thank you. Very much.